there's one domain of violence where the link between media and violence is not at all subtle and it's not at all indirect and that's self-harm. I don't know if you've ever come across the novel The Sorrows of Young Werther, written by Goethe back in 1774. The book is about a guy who falls in love with a woman who wasn't really interested in him and in the end he decides to end his own life. He planned a specific way of ending his life where he dressed himself in boots, a blue coat and a yellow vest and sat at his desk with an open book and shot himself. After releasing the novel, a number of suicides were reported across Europe with pretty strong evidence that at least some of the suicides were influenced by Goethe's novel. It was found that those who took their own lives were dressed similarly to Werther. They adopted his method and in some cases the book was even found at the scene of death. As a result, the book was banned all over Europe. This is now called the Werther effect, which refers to the phenomenon where a sharp increase in the rate of suicide occurs following the release of a high profile suicide story. People who are exposed to the stories copy the behaviour that's presented in the media. Some suicides will even be done in exactly the same way as a suicide publicised in the media. Those exposed to the stories who can also relate to the people in the stories, this could be their age and or life circumstances, are more likely to copy the person in the stories and die from suicide. This increase seems mainly to occur in areas where the high profile suicide stories are publicised. In 1974, Felix examined the number of suicide cases during the month in which the suicide stories were presented as front page articles in the US media between 1947 and 1968. He also looked at the number of suicides in the month before the suicide stories appeared in the US media as well as in the months following. Now these suicides were not associated with the book The Sorrows of Young Werther but referred to the number of people who took their own lives before and after suicide stories were publicised in the media during 1947 and 1968. The y-axis refers to the difference between the number of people who took their own lives that you would expect and not expect. A value of zero means that as many people took their own lives as you would expect on average. So you would expect most of those values to be bouncing around zero if the publicised suicide story had no effect on the number of suicides. Positive values mean that there are more suicides than we'd expect. Negative values mean there are fewer suicides than expected, probably due to some random variation. The x-axis shows the number of suicides the months before, the months during and the months after the suicide stories appeared in the media. Phillips found that in the month before the stories appeared, the number of suicides were not higher than expected. However, during the month when the story appeared, as well as in the month following, the number of suicides were much higher than expected. It's not really until two or three months later that the number of suicides actually levels back out to average. Now these are some serious statistics. You might look at this and go, okay, what's going on here? Well, maybe one thing that's happening here is that there's a whole bunch of people who are potentially suicidal and they're contemplating suicide and what the suicide story does is it accelerates that process. It's like a catalyst for something that would probably happen anyway. But that's not really what the data is saying, because if that was true, we'd expect a big spike in the number of suicides in the month or two after the story was presented, because what we'd expect to see is a whole bunch of people who are considering suicide rush out and take their lives in the aftermath of the story. And then the number of suicides should go down into the negative territory for a while. However, that's not what this data shows. And that's why this data appears so scary. Because the massive increase in the number of suicides all occurred around the time when the story was presented. And then the number goes down thereafter, suggesting that these are excess deaths. These are surplus deaths that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for the publicised suicide story in the media. Phillips also looked at a number of suicides following the deaths of eight presidents of the United States between 1900 and 1968, including after the assassination of J.F. Kennedy and found no statistically significant increase in the number of suicides following these high profile deaths. Nevertheless, a number of agencies around the world have developed national journalism codes to promote responsible reporting of suicides. These codes highlight the importance of using extreme restraint when publishing stories about deaths, such as 
avoid starting a television newscast with a story about suicide, avoid including the word suicide in the headlines, avoid placing a suicide story on the cover of a newspaper or a magazine, avoid sensationalising or romanticising suicide, avoid mentioning the details of the methods used, and keep the number of suicide stories at a minimum, and so on. So in many cases, if there's a suicide, media professionals use coded language to report the story. And sometimes we really have to read between the lines to find out how people took their own lives. Even though there are guidelines for media professionals to follow when reporting stories about suicide, it's up to the individual media professional to decide whether or not to follow them. A few years later, in 1979, Phillips claimed that the number of single driver vehicle fatalities increased by 31% three days following publicised suicides. He claimed that as the number of suicides publicised increased, so did the number of vehicle fatalities. Does this seem ridiculous to you? What could be going on here? There could be a couple of reasons. One reason could be that after seeing the suicide story in the media, people may become more reckless. Maybe a big story distracts people or kind of gets people in a different state of mind. Another reason is maybe these aren't accidents. Maybe some of these people are using their cars to kill themselves. Maybe hiding behind some of these car accidents are suicides. People are purposely driving off the road in their cars, slamming into trees and so on to take their own lives. It doesn't stop here. Phillips also found that the number of non-commercial plane crashes and airline crashes also increased after publicised suicides. He claimed that the spike in the number of plane fatalities persisted for around nine days. He even claimed that the more suicide stories were reported in the mass media, the more the number of airline crashes and non-commercial plane crashes increased. Phillips' findings seem pretty far-fetched. Because of this, some people have criticised the methodology that Phillips used although the media is still generally pretty careful when reporting news about suicides.